what was King Charles I's carpenter doing here in Leamster? Hi everyone, we're in Leamster. Now that is spelled L-E-O, Minster. So you may see references to lions here and there because of the Leo, but the Leo doesn't come into the way they say it. There is no Leo Minster, it's Leamster. It's full of lovely architecture. And we'll find out what King Charles I's carpenter was doing up here some 400 years ago. But we better head down through that alley, out into the town, and let's have a look at the shops to get started. It's market day. Look at all these lovely stalls. Come and grab your bowls. And who have we got here? <laughs> lovely big fat bowls. <laughs> Hello there, is this your stall? It is my stall. Lovely, and I assume it's for pets, pet food? Pet food, yep. Yeah. Pet food for a bird. Right. And do you find it a, a good market to be at, this one? Yes. Yes? One of the best I do. Oh, excellent. Oh, so let's have a look, see what you've got for sale. Seeds, Ooh. local seed, uh, yep. sunflowers, mealworms Ooh. from I'm a celebrity. I won't do the close up on the mealworms. <laughs> yeah, actually eat them on there, don't So it's dog treats. Oh, look at this. If you've got your dog, this is the place to come. If you've got a little dog, there's a little shoe. Oh, very cute. Oh, dried sausage and some bone news. Oh, plenty here for your pampered pets. I'm sure you'll find something. <laughs> oh, look at this wonderful stall here. I love the fact it's all yellow and even. Hello, I love your dungarees. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> and very your much. Camper van. And your camper van. Everything's so well coordinated. And here I've noticed some over the border cakes. So you may not know what they are, but we're in England and over the border is Wales. So they're Welsh cakes. And Phil's mum used to make Welsh cakes, didn't she, Phil? She did indeed. My mum used to cook them on the Rayburn. And with me and my two brothers. The stack never got very high because we ate them warm. Oh, look, Phil's oh, going to get a sample out. of I'm, Welsh cake. I'm getting a sample. Here we go. Oh, it looks nice. Oh, it looks light. Mm. Mm. Okay, I've got to try. Oh, there we go. <laughs> try a bit. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, that's very nice. She pinched a bit. I did. Pinched a very big mouthful. <laughs> Oh, thank you. They are very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Oop. This lady may be from across the border, but she can certainly cook a Welsh cake. So Absolutely. It, yep. But I couldn't possibly compare it with my dear old mum, because she's watching. <laughs> Sorry, mum. <laughs> very nice. Oh, well, let's have a look what else is for sale here. So if you come to Lemster on market day, then look at the choice you're going to have. Chocolate sponge, lemon sponge. Sold out of Victoria sponge. Sold, sold out of coffee and walnuts. Oh, Ooh, right. Yeah. You are obviously very popular. Very popular. So get here early if you want some Victoria and it, sponge. And it's all homemade by me. Right. How long have you had this store? Uh, about 16 months. Right. Might be 18 months. But yeah, then you enjoy yeah. running it here? I love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm very sad. I've got nothing better to do than stand in my own kitchen making cake. Uh, you can think of a lot worse things to do. So could I. <laughs> it's <laughs> wonderful. It's, it's the standing in the cold in the winter that's yeah. so good. Well, folks, it's been lovely chatting with Jan. It's been even more lovely eating her Welsh cakes. So thank you, Jan. We really appreciate your time. You and much. all the best with the store. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Nice thank to see you back. Bye then. Bye bye.
look at this for a pound i'm thinking i'm going to buy that for a lovely floral display in yep i'm going to have that and i have a pound lovely books plenty to tempt anyone but look at the building it's in wow that's pretty impressive for a bookshop building i love this little lane Locally made white puddings, four pound fifty each. Award-winning black country Hotson's black puddings, five pounds each. Ooh, I love black pudding. Howard Mosley with a pig hanging out the front. Oh wow, look at those pies. They're pretty impressive. Homemade faggots. And what does it say here? We stock six varieties of sausage. Ooh, something for everyone. Oh, let's have a look at some house prices. That's in Lemster, 365,000. Shobden, 550,000. This is the one I like, 525,000. And it's got a balcony upstairs. Look at all that greenery as well, and some beautiful flowers. Something a bit more modern for 375,000. And what about a bungalow? 325,000. Oh wow, if you want a black and white building, it's going to cost you £249,950 in Erdersley. I think it's Erdersley. I'd rather the one Staunton on Arrow. Oh, Staunton on Arrow with four acres, £895,000. I'll buy you one for your birthday. Thank you. Oh, what about this one? I'm never quite sure if this is Weebly or Wobbly. And there's a beautiful house there for £895,000. wall looks fairly normal until you stand next door to it now I'm going to stand with my shoulder here and my feet are right away at the bottom there and it gets worse look at that this wall is overhanging it's probably out about four inches from true about halfway up Ooh. I don't think it's going anywhere though those beams have been in place for a long time and they're still fine this is 4B Chapel gorgeous old building but there's an interesting sign down here I thought I'd let you have a look at. I'm going to lean over, it says, please keep off the cobbles as the foundations are unstable. Well, I certainly don't want to be responsible for actually making Formby Church fall over. Oops. Now, this chapel is interesting to me because in Wales we think of the churches. That's the Anglican Church, Church of Wales. The chapels are the non-conformists. But this chapel, 1282, the instruction was given for its building by the Archbishop. Why? Because the people of Lemster were rather upset that the monks up at the Priory were neglecting their duties and weren't giving them the opportunity to come to worship. They'd actually shut the church. So they built this so the people would have somewhere to go. Well, who would have thought it? But we're going to head up the street and check out the Priory. And just for all those who are counting monkeys and haven't seen one yet, Mankey's not with us today, but he will be on the live show, 9 o'clock on Saturday night.
As I mentioned at the beginning, there's no real indication as to why Leominster, which became Lemster. We know the history of this place is very much owes its wealth to the wool trade. And Lemster was just so associated with that trade and with the wealth that came from it. And that's why there is such grand properties all around. But there is one theory, it's a legend, and take it or leave it, they do say that a Northumbrian priest came down this way and visited the King of Mercia. We're talking around the 7th century. While they were at dinner, a lion came in to the hall, and the priest is said to have held out the bread that was in his hand and fed the lion who became calm with the bread. Now, we don't know if that's true. We do know the King of Mercia definitely set up a nunnery here, and that was back in the seventh century. And there's no doubt there was a priory. As we mentioned at the chapel, there was a dispute with the priory over the attitude of the monks to the townsfolks. And we are stood right outside the priory church. The priory is gone now, we'd have covered acres of this land. But here we have what is today the church here in Lemster and was the priory church built back in the 13th century. Glorious architecture, a phenomenal building standing right here on the very edge of the most beautiful town. So let's take a little bit of a look around and see if we can get inside and show you a little bit more. Oh, look at the wonderful carvings on this bit. Some lovely carving there of like knots and I don't know, some sort of wire work. And then we got a creature and some wheat, I'm assuming. Looks very much like wheat to me. Lovely old doors with that big handle. Look at that. And then if we go across, we got, oh, a serpent there. Oh, he's biting something. Oh, they're all eating some wheat. That's what they're up to. And they, that looks a bit like a monkey. And another one that side. And a bird. With another bird round the corner. Lovely. Very deep. Very impressive. Right, there's the way in. Should we pop in and have a look? I know you want to. Come on then. Oh, look, look, look. I think I'm going to like this. see the carved columns so these go up in steps and then there's a piscina which probably came from the nave which we're going to find there's a 12th century nave somewhere if we go looking for that we've got a huge set of organ pipes but then lower down look at this some lovely modern furniture that makes me think of Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table it's wonderful and there's even stained glass in the middle here. I wonder if there's a light through there. That would look really good. Here's a lovely neat little organ. And we can't go in here, but we can have a look through. Let's see what we can see. Oh, it's like a storeroom. We are now in the oldest part of the church. I believe this is 12th century. This is the Norman nave. So much has been added, altered, changed throughout history. But the feel that you stood somewhere that's been used for 900 years, that is really impressive and has a real strange effect as you just stand in this space and realise these walls have witnessed so much. Look at that ceiling. Isn't it lovely? Wow, pretty impressive. Saying that, it's in such an impressive situation too. Oh, look at that lion. Let's go have a look at that lion. Come on, we got to look. Oh, wow, look at that. He's huge. And he's lovely. Oh, I wonder if I can take him home. Oh, look at this. I think he must actually be a puppet. 
you can see you can get in under there. There are his legs down there and they're jointed so they must bend. Please do not touch the lion. Okay, you won't touch him. And if you look on the inside of the back legs, I don't know if you can see, there are handles so somebody can actually move the legs independent of whoever is moving the body. And I would assume somebody is going to be moving the head as well. Aha! Spoiler alert. If there is anybody in it, they could see out of that. This tablet was unveiled by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, on the 23rd of June 1960 at a service of thanksgiving to the celebrate the 13th centenary of Leominster Priory. Now, this is interesting. If you look at the width of the arches in the older church, can you see how wide they are? They're pretty big. But, moving on to the newer arches, they're even higher, but they're much thinner. It just goes to show how buildings improved over the years. The architects got very clever. Oh, wow, look at the carving on these chairs. Let's get a bit closer. Look at that. They look like little pansies. I'm not sure if they are pansies. They look like pansies. Here we got some people. Ah, there seem to be, that person seems to be treading grapes. So, possibly something to do with vineyards. Hello. Oh, look at this. There's a rope bell pull. Oh, do I pull? Shall I pull? Do you think it would be naughty to ring the church bell? Yes. Okay, I will ring it. What a beautiful church, so much history, such beauty and to be able to touch the walls that have housed those who've worshipped for a thousand years, it's amazing. And of course the prior year goes on beyond that, we saw the plaque that marked 1300 years of worship, but of course it's also seen its um, problems as well because of the wealth from the world attracted those who would like to have their share of the wealth without working for it. That included the British tribes, they attacked Leominster in 777. 980, it was the Danes, they were over here and they were trying to take their fair share. 1052, it was the Welsh. Yes, those pesky Welsh coming across the border and causing mayhem. But there is a place here that has a significance and we're about to head there now and show you a gorgeous building that has been standing for the, since 1633 and it's a boot and here it is that building I just spoke of and the answer to the question because this was built in 1633 by John Abel and John Abel became the king's carpenter, King Charles I, the guy who lost his head after the Civil War. So we're going back in time, but this still stands proud. Beautiful lions at the doorway and gorgeous carvings. And I'm sure Caroline will show you around the building now and you can see those carvings for yourself. Look at these lions. I just love them. Oh, this one's looking a little worse for wear. Got some damage on his back. This one's in pretty good condition. I love their faces. They look friendly. Hello, Mr. Lion. I would love these lions in my front garden. Or my back garden. Probably my back garden. I'd go in my back garden more, so I'd enjoy them more. Oh, look at this. I think this is Snicho. It's got a nice smell to it. We've got a, oh, that poor lavender plant isn't doing well, but if we jump over to this one, they're looking a little healthier now. And that bee approves, he's enjoying the nectar. So somewhere there's going to be lovely lavender honey. And then we got some elephant ewes. All along the front, and then, looking at, we've got the building. 
Oh, can you see the light fitting in there? I don't think it's picking up on camera, but if it is, then you'll see how wonderful it is. If we look up, look at that. It's so impressive and there are so many carvings on it. Wherever they could fit one, they put one. Sometimes we mention that these timber frame properties we've heard can be dismantled and their owners would move them elsewhere. Well, it seems that's exactly what's happened with this property. Because over the years, it's been a courthouse, it's been a town hall, it's even been a private residence, it's been offices for the local authority, it's been all sorts. And it's been in more than one place because it's been taken down, moved and rebuilt. And I think where it stands now is perfect with this view across the parklands. And it's been such a joy to see today. I hope you've enjoyed this video of Lemster as much as we've enjoyed making it. From the people in the marketplace, to the history in the church, to this glorious building and everything in between. Even Caroline checking out the house prices. If you have, then please give us a thumbs up. Noing, noing, noing. And don't forget, till the next time, have fun. Bye. Bye.